As you may know, 1993 was a huge year for films. There are many films that turned 30 years old in the year of 2023, many films that already have. So instead of going over anniversary specials during this summer over movies that turned 30, I decided to bring just a list of films that you can watch that are 30 years old now or will soon be 30 years old. If I miss any, feel free to let me know some films that you recommend down in the comments below. You can also check out my other videos such as films that turn 10 and films that turn 20 in 2023. So to start off, we have two films that came out around the same time in the summer. 30 years ago, first being Last Action Hero. I highly recommend this uh, meta comedy starring Arnold Schwarzenegger. Another one, I can't believe it, is Jurassic Park. I remember I was like two years old when this film came out. I remember watching this on VHS, playing with all the toys. I didn't really get into it in cinemas until Lost World Jurassic Park, but this is such an iconic film that still stands the test of time 30 years later. Then we have a Disney classic with The Three Musketeers. All for one and one for all. Excellent adaptation, very fun. Has Oliver Platt, Kiefer Sutherland, Charlie Sheen and Chris O'Donnell, Tim Curry, and Michael Wincott as the villains. Then we have Mel Brooks' spoof of Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves with Robin Hood, Men in Tights. Carrie Elwes and Dave Chappelle star in this comedy. This is a hilarious parody of Robin Hood. Then we have a Disney film that's a bit edgy for even now called The Program, an excellent football film with James Caan and a young Halle Berry. Speaking of edgy films, we have Tombstone. You tell them I'm coming and hell's coming with me. Wonderful performances from Kurt Russell, Val Kilmer, Sam Elliott, Bill Paxton, Powers Booth, and Michael Bean. An iconic Western and one of the best films of the 90s. I highly recommend it. Then we have the historical film Gettysburg. Then we have Brian De Palma and Al Pacino reuniting for Carlito's Way. An underrated film that I actually think is better than Scarface in many ways. And then we have another Sylvester Stallone film, Cliffhanger. Action packed. It was spoofed in Ace Ventura when nature calls. I highly recommend it. Another Sylvester Stallone classic is Demolition Man. We're actually getting pretty close to that future. It's scary how prophetic this film was 30 years ago. And even though it does look like a 90s movie and has an action movie themes of the 90s, it still very much is relevant. Also includes Wesley Snipes and Sandra Bullock. Let's hope we don't have to use a seashell. Some things never change. This year it has Super Mario Brothers. 30 years ago, we had a version of Super Mario Brothers. Just imagine Dennis Hopper looking like a dinosaur with Everybody Walk the Dinosaur playing with Bob Hoskins and John Lacazamo as Mario and Luigi. Next up is a very good film called Falling Down with Michael Douglas. You wanna see somebody go postal? It's not that hard to imagine, but Michael Douglas did it very well 30 years ago. Next up is The Fugitive, an excellent Harrison Ford movie outside of Star Wars and Indiana Jones. I didn't kill my wife. Tom Lee Jones is like, I don't care. Won an Academy Award. Excellent adaptation to a TV show. And it had a sequel later down the road called U.S. Marshals. Next up with adaptations, we have one of a novel with Denzel Washington and Julia Roberts called The Pelican Brief. Excellent Warner Brothers film. After that is another film called In the Line of Fire with Clint Eastwood where he plays a bodyguard to the President of the United States. There's conspiracy, there's action. Jurassic Park wasn't Spielberg's only big film. We also have Schindler's List based on a true story. Oh man, this film is one of the most moving films I've ever witnessed and it's based on a real event. It's based on the Holocaust and a real person. Just great performances and the way this is shot. Spielberg poured his heart and soul into this movie and anybody out there who wants to study history, watch this film. It's a mandatory viewing for everybody. For more lighthearted fare, we have Sleepless in Seattle. Yes, it's Meg Ryan and Tom Hanks reuniting after Joe vs. the Volcano, but before You've Got Mel, an excellent rom-com that I used to watch with my mother growing up. Tom Hanks also had a film called Philadelphia. Sad movie has Jason Robards and Tony Banderas where like Tom Hanks plays a homosexual man who's basically dealing with AIDS and dying. Denzel Washington's also in this film. Oh man. Sad movie that won him an Academy Award. Next up, we have a wonderful Tony Scott film that was written by Quentin Tarantino called True Romance. If you like Pulp Fiction and Reservoir Dogs, you're gonna dig this film. Has Christian Slater and Patricia Arquette with Gary Oldman and unrecognizable performance, Christopher Walken and Dennis Hopper. 
and a young Brad Pitt. Next up, You're Killing Me Smalls, a classic. The Sandlot is mandatory viewing for every child out there, every person. The Sandlot's one of those classic feel-good movies that never gets old. Next up for kid movies, we have Homer Bound, The Incredible Journey. I love this with Sally Field, Michael J. Fox, the voices on this. One and two are great, but I remember the first one vividly. We also had other kid movies like Dennis the Menace, classic with Walter Matthau, and then Free Willy. Who could forget Michael Jackson on the soundtrack and the Mask of the Phantasm trailer on the VHS? Speaking of Mask of the Phantasm, Batman Mask of the Phantasm is also necessary viewing. We had Lucas talking now. Instead of a baby talking, it's a dog, or should I say dogs, with Dane DeVito and Diane Keaton. Kirstie Alley, may she rest in peace, and John Travolta reunite in this film. Speaking of Walter Matthau, we also had Grumpy Old Man with him and Jack Lemmon. I love this movie. This movie never gets old. Perfect duo. Channeling that odd couple magic a uh, later period in their lives. Speaking of the Sandlot, we also had Rookie of the Year where this baseball player gets to be Rookie of the Year on a Major League Baseball team. All right, all right, all right. We have Richard Linklater's Dazed and Confused. If you want to know what it's like for teens in the 70s in Austin, Texas, check this film out. And it also has a very iconic Matthew McConaughey role. Next up, we have two Leo DiCaprio dramas with This Boy's Life, where he deals with Robert De Niro being an abusive father to him, and then What's Eating Gilbert Grape. Him and Johnny Depp were fantastic in this movie. Next up, we have a remake of Love and Men Nikita with Point of No Return with Bridget Fonda. Rudy, Rudy underrated Notre Dame Irish film with Sean Astin. Any Notre Dame fan, football fan, needs to see this. One of the best sports movies and just one of the best movies, period. For more comedies, we have The Coneheads from SNL with Dan Aykroyd and Jane Curtin. And in addition to Wayne's World 2, party time, excellent. For more serious fare, we have John Grissom's The Firm with Tom Cruise. Then we have Indecent Proposal with Woody Harrelson, Demi Moore, and Robert Redford. Yeah, every couple should see that film. Then we have Rising Sun, another Michael Crichton adaptation. I love this with Sean Connery and Wesley Snipes investigating a murder. Great detective film. And then we have Judgment Night with Emilio, Emilio Estevez, yes. Going to more comedic fare with Emilio Estevez is Loaded Weapon 1 from National Lampoons. I love him and Samuel Jackson spoofing Lethal Weapon. And then an underrated film from Martin Scorsese, The Age of Innocence with Michelle Pfeiffer, Dale Day-Lewis, and Renona Ryder. Many kids remember Robin Williams in the 90s. Mrs. Doubtfire is another iconic film. It's a little bit wrong by today's standards, but who cares? I love it. It's Robin Williams trying to get his family back, maybe being a little bit too possessive over his family. I love it. Pierce Brosnan in the mix, Sally Field. Ah, this is just a classic film from Chris Columbus. Then we have Dave, where Kevin Klein pretends to be the president. We have him with Sigourney Weaver underrated Ivan Reitman comedy. After that, we have Mel Gibson's directorial debut with The Man Without a Face, where he plays a man who's disfigured. It also includes a young Nick Stow. For more lighthearted Disney comedy, we have Cool Runnings with John Candy. I used to love watching this film growing up. You had Land Before Time, but then there was also We're Back, A Dinosaur Story. Then you had one of my favorite sequels growing up. Even though it gets a lot of flack now, I love this. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3. Who could forget Tarzan Boy by Baltimore on the soundtrack, The Return of Casey Jones, and The Scepter. It has some cheesy moments now in retrospect, but you know what? I love this movie. I really enjoy this more than the second one. That's going to make a lot of people mad, but I still stand by this movie. All three films are great, but like three had a lot more in common with one. Speaking of third films, Robocop 3 is a great underrated film. Bad by today's standards. Back then it seemed so good. Now it's just like very dated and just horrible compared to the first two, but it's a guilty pleasure. I love it. There's a lot of stuff in this film that's very relevant for today. After that is Mary Kate and Ashley with Double Double Toil and Trouble. Love this Halloween film. Going more into horror, we have The Dark Half with Timothy Hutton, an underrated Stephen King adaptation where his own creation, his own character comes to life. His dark half comes for his life and wants to take over. Then we have Hocus Pocus, a classic that still stands strong, even over its sequel 30 years later. After that is an underrated sequel, Adam's Family Values, Malibu Barbie. Next up, we have the horror film Leprechaun with Warwick Davis early Jennifer Aniston film. Then we have The Nightmare Before Christmas, an iconic Tim Burton film. I love this. Chris Sarandon, oh man, Danny Elfman's music. Just a great film. Next up is an iconic Bill Murray comedy directed by Harold Ramis, Groundhog Day. 
Then we have an underrated Matt Dillon film, Mr. Wonderful. Also has a young James Gandolfini as well. Speaking of misters, we have Mr. Nanny with Hulk Hogan. Yeah, in the age of John Cena, Dave Bautista, and The Rock, we had Hulk Hogan in films back in the day. After that is an underrated John Badham sequel with Another Stakeout, starring Rosie O'Donnell, Emilio Estevez, and Richard Dreyfus. One of the few PG-13 sequels to an R movie that's just as good as the original, in my opinion. Beethoven's Second. While it's not the first film, this is a charming film for what it is. And who could forget Spin Doctors on the soundtrack? After that is an underrated Mike Myers, Nancy Travis film called So I Married an Axe Murderer. Next up, we have Hot Shots Part 2. This is a funny film. The first film made fun of Top Gun. This one makes fun of Rambo 3 and other action movies of that time. Charlie Sheen was funny in this, but who could forget Lloyd Bridges? Next up with Whoopi Goldberg, we have Made in America with her and Ted Danson, as well as Sister Act 2. The first film was a tough act to follow, but this sequel is just as enjoyable as the original, in my opinion. Then we have Dragon, a Bruce Lee story, a fantastic biopic, and Rob Cohen directs this before directing The Fast and Furious. Last but not least, we have one of my favorite comedies, Son-in-Law, with Polly Shore and Carla Gugino. Lane Smith. I, I love this movie. I used to watch this all the time on Showtime with my mom. We watched it on DVD. This is just a fantastic, feel-good comedy. And kind of in the same vein as Meet the Parents, but before it, you know. Anyway, those are just my recommendations of films that turn 30 that you can see in 2023. There are many films that came out. I might have missed some. So if I missed some that weren't on the list that you recommend, feel free to do so. Comment down below and send me your film recommendations of films from 1993. In the meantime, you can check out films that turn 10 and 20 on my channel. And if you like this video, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe for more content. May everyone stay safe and healthy, and I hope you stay cool during the summer. Till next time.